Good evening. Thanks for joining us on your Tuesday. I'm Sophie Erber. Negotiations between Kellogg's and striking union workers could soon be on the horizon, but for now, picketers are entering their fourth week on strike. How the missing paychecks are starting to impact them now in our top story at five. For three weeks, the honking hasn't stopped outside the Omaha Kellogg's plant. But as striking workers near the one month mark on the picket line, some are feeling those missed paychecks. Financially, this is a really scary moment where I can't believe that Kellogg's has let us or along with legacy people um, to be out here this long. Maria Terrazas is a newer Kellogg's employee hired on earlier this year. At a time when so many employers are looking for workers, she got another job to help cover the bills, but has no plans to stop striking either. I've worked it out so I could still stand out here. People like Terrasa stand shoulder to shoulder with longtime Kellogg workers like Sharice Napolini. I started here actually 36 years ago. Regardless of tenure with the company, though, all these employees are missing out on regular pay and benefits right now. The local president of the Bakery Confectionery Tobacco and Grain Millers Union says those who work the picket line get $105 a week. It's just a little grocery money in your pocket, basically, but not much. The local union says Kellogg wants to do away with cost of living adjustments and get rid of a 30 percent cap on the number of lower wage workers. Napolini herself is a legacy employee, the higher paid tier, but she says this isn't just about her. My uncle, my cousin, we've all worked here. There's a lot of people that have had, you know, decades of family here. So we want to just keep it rolling for our future kids and stuff and the you know juniors that are here now we support our families we have kids we have moms like i'm here i take care of my mom and it's emotional um because we want to work and we want kellogg is offering to restart talks with workers who have been on strike since earlier this month roughly 1400 employees walked out of four of the cereal makers plants across the nation in a dispute Again, that's centered on the company's proposal for a two-tiered system. It's a system that would give newer workers the lower pay and fewer benefits. Meanwhile, natural gas prices are increasing by 50 to 100 percent nationwide, meaning heating bills might soon become affordable for, unaffordable for some. But there are opportunities available for those who need some help. Locally, through the Community Action Agency of Siouxland's Low Income Housing Energy Assistance Program, they will begin accepting applications starting November 1st, so next Monday, both on their website or over the phone. And we provided a link to that contact information on our website right now. You can check it out at SiouxlandProud.com. Siouxlanders in public service may no longer have to worry about their student loan debt. The Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program has changed some previous enacted restrictions. Siouxlanders still need to make 120 payments, but as long as you work for a qualifying employer, any payment made in the past will count regardless of loan type or whether or not that payment was made on time. Crime Prevention Officer Andrew Dutler says police officers who applied for loan forgiveness in the past were faced with plenty of obstacles. They weren't qualifying and what they were finding out is that the rules weren't clear. They might have had some federal loans that didn't qualify. Uh, their loans were in forbearance for a period of time or maybe uh, they took some time off from paying those loans. Coming up tonight at 6, tune in to hear how colleges and students know about these changes. Election day is just a week away now officially, but Sioux City residents who would like to still vote early will have that opportunity this Saturday. It's October 30th at the Woodbury County Auditor's Office. That'll be open from 8 in the morning until 4.30 p.m. for in-person absentee voting. This includes any eligible voters who have not yet registered, but that they can provide their ID and place of residency. And it's time now to turn our attention to the weather department. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. Scott, uh, another day where we are reminded fall is here to stay, and so are those cooler temperatures. Breezy, too. That's right, Sophie. We've had cloudy skies and seasonal highs out there today, mainly in the 50s. As we check the local map here, 57 in Sioux City this afternoon, 58 in Tacama and Omaha, 55 degrees today in Cherokee, and 56 in Wayne. We expect to have some showers and thunderstorms move in after midnight tonight. It looks like the rain will linger around through much of the day tomorrow, heavy at times, before finally coming to an end as we transition into Thursday. There is also a marginal risk of seeing a severe storm happen overnight as we head into tomorrow. 
tomorrow. Expecting that to mainly occur in northeast Nebraska with some heavy downpours, perhaps some small hail. We'll talk more about how much rain will fall coming up in the complete forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Are flies and small insects still lingering around your home? KCAU 9 talked to an insect expert about some ways that you can keep the bugs at bay. That includes the best places to spray in your home. You can find all the tips in the story online on our website right now with the address there on your screen. That's, of course, SiouxlandProud.com or click that story on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. Meatpacking giant Tyson Foods says more than 96% of its workers have been vaccinated ahead of the company's November 1st deadline for them to do so. The company says it has seen a significant decline in virus cases as more than 120,000 workers got their shots. Tyson says workers who don't get the shot by the deadline, again that's November 1st, will be fired. Tyson remains the only major meatpacking company in the country to require vaccinations. The vaccination mandate came with an agreement to provide 20 hours of paid sick leave to its employees. The Citizen Lifesaver Award was given out today here in Siouxland by Sioux City Fire Rescue. Sergeant Doug Botger of the Woodbury County Sheriff's Office received the honor. It's for actions while responding to a seizure at Perkins on June 21st. The fire department says when he arrived at the Gordon Drive restaurant, Botger was already performing CPR and says that it's a skill that more people can benefit from learning. I hope that the public takes CPR classes and realize you don't have to be a fireman or a peace officer or a paramedic to do this. This is stuff that everybody can learn. And it might be your relative that you're having a conversation with or a dinner with when they get stricken. The patient did regain a pulse while en route to the hospital. The fire department credits the quick actions taken by the sergeant. Well, TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube were in the hot seat today. This is lawmakers question the tech companies about their influence on children. Following that recent leak from Facebook, senators now want to see how the social media apps will keep kids safe. All three companies say they've taken steps to protect children and emphasize that apps like Snapchat are not for those under the age of 13. We are developing new tools that will give parents more oversight over how their teens are using Snapchat. Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey wants full cooperation now from big tech on legislation protecting teenagers' data. YouTube has agreed on that legislation, and despite the actions taken so far, Democrats and Republicans say they still want to see more. Well, a new study shows that following a ketogenic or keto diet alters brain and body metabolism in people with brain tumors. With more, here's ABC News' Faith Abube. A new study from Johns Hopkins University shows that people with brain tumors who followed a ketogenic diet had metabolism changes in their body, brains, and even within the brain tumor itself. A ketogenic diet is high fat, high protein, and low in carbohydrates and prompts the body to burn fat instead of carbs. Patients with a tumor called astrocytoma followed and tolerated a ketogenic diet for eight weeks, 80% of them showing signs of metabolism changes. In addition, all people in the study showed a drop in blood sugar, insulin levels, and fat, and an increase in lean body mass. More research is needed as the study did not determine whether this diet could prevent tumor growth overall or increase how long they live. But with changes to the brain tumor's metabolism, researchers hypothesized that this could potentially impact the rate at which it grows. The study adds to the growing evidence on the impact of nutrition, food, and diet on our overall health and medical treatment. Any patients being treated for a brain tumor should talk to their doctors first before changing their diet. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abube, ABC News. Well, there was a heartfelt moment you might have missed during the Sunday football lineup, how Tom Brady brought a smile to a young fan's face coming up in about 10 minutes. And a substantial soaking is coming to Siouxland tomorrow with rainfall amounts between one and two inches. It's going to be windy and cool for a while before we dry things out and warm up a bit this weekend. Your 9 on 9 forecast coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5.
Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we're glad if you're watching, you're inside staying warm because really not the prettiest day to be outside clouds and the wind really making it more unpleasant than it even should be. That's right, Sophie. Yeah, pretty gloomy outside today. We've had some cool temperatures in the 40s and 50s and that persistent breeze, though it has been from the southeast, it has not ushered in much warmth. As we check out the view from the Ho-Chunk Center camera set up in downtown Sioux City, you can see those cloudy skies. And as we transition into tomorrow, we should expect to have some rain fall out of those clouds. Here's a look at what's happening in Sioux City at this morning. moment. The temperature is 57 degrees. We have a southeast wind rushing through at 21 miles per hour with a relative humidity of 55% and a dew point of 41. Temperatures are currently stationed in the 50s throughout Siouxland. It is 55 degrees outside in Norfolk and Yankton. Current temperature 55 also for Sioux Falls. A little cooler to the west. It is 40s to right around 50 degrees with a small chance of rain next Monday. Here's a beautiful sunset that comes to us courtesy of Cindy Smith. This was near Storm Lake, Iowa in Buena Vista County. You can see those awesome oranges and pinks on the horizon. If you have a picture that you want to share with Siouxland, make sure to send it on in to weather at KCAUTV.com. The email address you see on your screen will send you a form, fill it out, send it back, and we'll show your picture on TV. It's a pretty easy process. Yeah, we've had some gorgeous uh, sunsets, of course, this, this summer and fall season, but last night was really a standout. Exactly, yeah. Just beautiful sunset last evening, Sophie. Uh, that great horizon, so make sure to keep sending those in. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, it's a camera shootout. iPhone, iPhone versus Samsung. See the results with a variety of different videos and photos. That's coming up in about seven minutes. We'll show you, but first, beating cancer and the Bears. One young Bucks fan had the perfect Sunday. How Tom Brady made it even better with a special present next. Tom Brady added yet another milestone to his record setting career on Sunday night. But as Justin Shecker reports, the most meaningful moment happened actually in the sidelines. Late in the fourth quarter, the goat gave a kid who just kicked cancer's butt a moment he'll never forget. On yet another historic Sunday for Tom Brady. The most meaningful hands off the Bucks quarterback made was to a special young fan in the stands. That was really sweet. Yeah, obviously tough kid. The sign Noah Reed brought to Raymond James Stadium says it all. Tom Brady helped me beat brain cancer. Near the end of the blowout win over the Bears, the nine-year-old boy from Utah was overcome with emotion when Brady handed him a hat and shook his hand. The hat Reed received from the GOAT is part of the NFL's Crucial Catch campaign. The league's mission to raise awareness and fight cancer is personal for coach Bruce Arians. He's a three-time cancer survivor. I didn't get to see it until afterwards, and, uh, you know, that, that makes the day. Um, winning is one thing, but uh, when a young guy beats cancer and, and gets, gets that, you know, Tom going over, gave him his hat and uh, the emotions, um, that's very, very special. After that special moment with his hero, Reeb was all smiles with his dad. Puts a lot in perspective of what we're doing on the field. Um, in the end, it doesn't mean much compared to what so many people go through. Doctors say they'll be keeping an eye on Noah for the next several years to make sure he stays healthy and strong. After the game, Noah's dad posted on Instagram saying, quote, a dream come true, still hard to believe, end quote. News Nation Prime gathers news from across the country at 8 every night. But before that, Leland Vitter and Dan Abrams break down today's hot topics, and we have a preview. Tonight on News Nation, we're going to introduce you to the one NBA player who has the moral courage to stand up to China. Plus, the aldermen who are the unlikely critics, you might say, of Chicago's universal income program. That's On Balance. Here's Dan Abrams live. Officers confuse Brian Laundry with his mother. Now an ex-police chief breaks down how this mistake could have happened. That's tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. That's all coming up tonight on the fastest growing cable news network in America. That's News Nation available on these channels here on your screen or check your local guide. It's a Halloween photo shoot with an iPhone and a Samsung, both bringing their best to the table. Whose shot will come out the winner? Find out next. It's an epic rivalry, at least in the tech world, Samsung versus iPhone. Rich DeMuro took the best from each brand for a test run, and we'll see which phone takes the better pictures. Fall is a perfect time for photos. I started my camera comparison at Underwood Family Farms, equipped with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro, two of the best smartphones available. 
Okay, so I think I found my first photo op, this giant pumpkin. How much does it weigh? That's another question. Colors are more vibrant on the iPhone, but Samsung's rendition probably looks more like it did in real life. Seems like a good place for a selfie. Mixed light makes for a challenge. Light streaks interrupt an otherwise good iPhone photo. Samsung is a bit more neutral, but it's probably the better picture here. Cinematic mode is a new feature on the iPhone. Notice how the background looks blurry. Samsung has a similar feature and they've had it for a while now. They call it portrait video. Neither looked very good. Now let's see this video side by side. Both look great. iPhone is slightly more balanced. These will be great for macro mode. iPhone did a better job here. I was able to get closer and more focused than Samsung. Let's see which camera can do the best wide angle. Apple takes a darker approach to the scene, while Samsung is brighter. Speaking of dark, I also went to Hauntoween to see how these cameras do in low light. iPhone did better on this saloon. Samsung's version is blurry and blah. Likewise, this carnival ride looks a bit washed out from the Samsung camera iPhone makes it pop. Overall, you're gonna get fantastic pictures from both of these phones, especially in bright light. It's largely a matter of preference, but it seems like the iPhone does do better in low light and in video. Take a live look outside right now. Some cloudy skies over Cherokee, but don't go away. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. Before we wrap up here at five, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at six. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon on Tuesday, Sophie. The federal government continues to take a look at student loans and news today that uh, students denied college loan forgiveness in the past might now be eligible for uh, forgiveness. Coming up at six, find out what the change to that program is and how the updated program could impact student loan debt across Siouxland. That's coming up at six. Also ahead in just a half an hour, there are about 19 million U.S. veterans, and many of them are looking for a way to continue serving their country long after their time in the military has ended. We'll introduce you to one man who is doing exactly that, thanks to some spray paint and some wood. It's an interesting story we'll share with you coming up. We'll see you at six. Looks beautiful. Can't wait to see that up close. Thanks a lot, Tim. And uh, not so beautiful outside today. Yeah, not the uh, most lovely weather outside today, Sophie. We had cloudy skies, a strong breeze. Thunderstorms look to roll in past midnight tonight as the low temperature descends to 49, 53. The high for tomorrow, wet, breezy, and cool. Emphasis on wet as we could pick up between one and two inches of fresh precipitation. Looks like it'll stay windy into Thursday, maybe a lingering shower. Highs in the 40s and 50s as we proceed into next week. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll also be here tonight at 6 with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.